Let's talk carbs. Let's talk carbs because I think this is an important subject. Many people are told that in order to manage uh, their diabetes, they must reduce their carb intake. And so they, um, they go and they reduce the amount of carbs that they eat, but it bothers me because when you do that, you're also reducing the amount of micronutrients and fiber your body needs for overall health and diabetes management. So if, if carbs are so essential and yet you feel like you're not supposed to eat them, you know, why such a conundrum? What's going on? I think it's because we're not only confused by what a carb is, but also by what actually is the root cause of diabetes. You know, when we think, we think it's the carbs in our diet, but I beg to differ. So let's quickly see if we can shed some light onto the truth of the matter. First of all, what are carbohydrates? At their simplest, they are one of the main types of nutrient our body needs. They are our primary source of energy. They provide the body with glucose, which is converted to energy to support bodily functions and physical activity. From thinking to running to simply breathing, carbs are vital. They are found in foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. Now, pay attention to this next video by Dr. Neil Barnard. It will explain to you the cause of type 2 diabetes and hopefully make it more clear as to why the issue is not too many carbs in your diet per se. This big purple oval is a cell a cell in the body. This could be a muscle cell, for example, or maybe a liver cell. And cells run on a certain fuel. That fuel is glucose. You know about this. There's glucose in the blood and that glucose has to get into the cell. That glucose is going to fuel the cell. It powers it like gasoline can power a car. The glucose powers the cell, but it needs to get inside and you'll see it can't. Glucose does not pass through that cell membrane. There are channels to let it through, but they're not open. So I need a key. The key is insulin. And that insulin key will attach to the surface of the cell. And when it does, it opens up a little channel that lets the glucose come inside. Okay, make sense? Now, what could ever go wrong? Well, what could go wrong is this. I'm eating meat for dinner, for lunch, for breakfast, I'm eating a lot of oily foods, fatty foods throughout the day. And yes, there's fat in all of these foods. Now, what could fat have to do with diabetes? Here's what it has to do with the diabetes. This cell starts to incorporate the fats from my diet. As I'm eating meat or I'm eating cheese or fried foods, the fat that you eat goes and passes into your muscle cells. These are tiny particles of fat. You can't see them with the naked eye, but they're building up inside the cell. And doctors hate words like fat because it only has one syllable. So doctors call it intramyocellular lipid. Intra means inside. Myo means muscle. Cellular means cellular. Lipid means fat. Intramyocellular lipid is fat build up inside the cell and that came from the foods that you eat. So what's that fat going to do? Well, now the insulin key attaches to the cell, just like normal, but you discover that the key doesn't work anymore. Those glucose molecules are, can't get through the membrane. Something about fat building up inside the cells causes insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is the first step toward type 2 diabetes, and it comes from the fat that we ate. So now I'm going to go on a vegan diet. No animal products. I'm going to keep oils low. And I discover something. The fat starts to go away. I'm avoiding fat in my foods, and the fat comes out of my cells. And as the fat goes out of my cells, my insulin resistance goes away. And I'm now more insulin sensitive. And so the glucose can go back into the cell. My blood glucose goes down. And my blood numbers are getting better and better and better. And suddenly my doctor is smiling, saying, whatever I'm doing, my diabetes is improving. 
Now, here's the good news. In its simplistic terms, eating more natural and unprocessed foods rich in fiber and nutrients, including carbohydrates and reducing fats will help to reverse insulin resistance. Now, when I say carbohydrates, I'm referring to whole foods and not refined carbs, which is a very, very um, important distinction. So this is refined carbs, very processed, uh, nutrients have been stripped away, uh, added nonsense, you know, all this stuff that's detrimental to your body. They essentially have no fiber and thus can elevate your blood sugar and have no other medicine that your body needs for its livelihood. So, you know, you have your sugary snacks, your sodas, your pastries, your chips, your popcorn, your white bread. Now, it is crucial for a diabetic to monitor their sugar levels. Everybody is different. Everybody's body is different. Pay attention to how different foods affect you personally, especially as you transition into a more whole foods, plant-based, carbohydrate-rich diet. Adjust as needed. So initially, if you're diabetic, you might need to be mindful of carb intake, even whole food carbs. But as insulin sensitivity improves, you can enjoy these life enriching foods more abundantly. So study after study confirms that carbs are not the enemy, but misinformation and lack of knowledge are. So, so let's not villainize um, carbohydrates, but rather embrace them for the vital role they play in our health. Now, initially, if you are diabetic, you might need to be mindful of your carbohydrate intake, even whole food carbs. But as insulin sensitivity improves, you can enjoy these life enriching foods more abundantly. So consult your healthcare provider for personalized advice. But remember this, you are your own best advocate for your health. Stay informed, stay healthy, and let's spread the truth about carbohydrates and diabetes. I'll see you the next time.